Okay, so in this example, we explore the central limit theorem a bit further. You can see we have a pretty simple application here. We just have a couple of different parameters that we have to set. Uh, the first is distribution. So I have a couple of different distributions, exponential, Poisson, uniform, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we're going to start with the default, which is exponential rate parameter one. Uh, recall that the exponential, as we know super well by now, um, sort of the story of it is that it models the wait time for a bus. You could think of it, you know, it's a wait time for anything, but you could think of it as the wait time for the bus. And this one is like the rate parameter um, of the bus's arrival. So we expect to, in this case, uh, in the general case where we have an exponential lambda random variable, we expect to wait one over lambda units of time. So here the expectation of, X, of an expo one is one because we have one over one. So just simple facts about the exponential, which you are already super familiar with. Our second parameter is this uh, n number of random variables. So recall, uh, with the central limit theorem, we're interested in the sample mean as n grows larger. Um, n basically means the number of random variables that we add up, and then we divide, obviously, to take the sample mean. So here we have n equals 3. That means we're going to take three draws from an exponential 1 distribution, add them up, and divide by 3. That will be our sample mean. And the idea is that we're going to do this, do that a lot of times, right? So we're going to add up three exponentials, divide by 3. That's one observation. That's one sample mean. We're going to do that thousands and thousands of times, and we're going to plot. We're going to hit go, and we're going to plot that. And the idea, again, with the central limit theorem is that that should become normal as n increases. So let's actually go ahead and try it. We'll hit go. And you see uh, we have two colors in this plot. This blue plot is a normal density, a estimated normal density. This is what the normal distribution would be if um, the sample mean was truly normal. Okay, so the sample mean has a, a mean and a variance, and if it had a normal distribution, this is what its distribution would be. Uh, the green line is what we were kind of describing before, taking a ton of sample means, plotting them, and seeing what we get. And as you can see, it, it, it kind of looks like it's normal. If we increase n, it starts to become more and more normal, right? So we went from 17, now we go to 33, getting more and more normal, and let's just push it all the way to 100. We get something that's, that's pretty normal, and we can keep these parameters and just, you know, do a bunch of extra samples by just hitting go. So we just see, we hit go, and we get things that are generally uh, uh, pretty normal. Notice that it's not perfect, right? Um, the CLT is an asymptotic result, right? As n approaches infinity, the distribution approaches normal. It's approximately normal, so it's not exact, but it's, it's pretty good. This is, this is something that's pretty normal. Um, one thing that we can check to kind of solidify our understanding of this whole like sample mean concept and the sample mean is a random variable is uh, try and go and slide n back to being one. So in this case, when we have n equals one and we take the sample mean, that just means we add up one exponential random variable and we divide by n equals one. We divide by one, so we, we essentially don't do anything. So this, when n equals one, this is just this should just be the plot of an exponential, the, the plot of the density of an exponential one random variable, and you can see it kind of is. This green is just the you know the right skewed density of an exponential, you know, we know it's memoryless, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that kind of like helps you solidify. And as we move up, you know, we're taking the sample mean and we're plotting it a bunch of times. Um, another thing to note is notice for, we'll set n to be some small value, we'll set it to be 2 here. Doesn't look, the exponential sample mean doesn't look super normal. If we choose a symmetric distribution, like the uniform, it becomes normal much faster. Um, so here, again, we're going to set n equal to 1. This is saying, right, when n equals 1, we just are plotting the density of a uniform by the same argument from earlier. You can see this is kind of uniform density. Obviously, it's a little random because it's a random draw, but it's just a uniform density. But as we increase n, you know, we just increase it to 2, and already, oops, it just increased to 2, and already it looks very normal. You know, and as soon as we increase it to 5, it looks even more normal. We go all the way up to 100, and, and, it's, and it's extremely normal. The reason that is, is is pretty simple. We won't go into the technicalities of it, but the normal distribution itself is symmetric, so it makes sense that something that starts off symmetric uh, kind of approaches symmetry much faster. And you can try this with, you know, the binomial. It's also pretty. This is. Um, when n equals 1, so again, just the plot of the binomial. It looks kind of weird and wiggly because uh, the binomial is not continuous, right? It's a discrete distribution, so in this case, it can only take on, uh, you know, it's, it's, this is 10 flips of a fair coin where we count the number of heads, right? So we have n equals 10, p equals 1 half. 
Um, so we can only take on 0, 1, 2, 3, so that's why you kind of see the squiggling. But as you increase, the sample mean becomes continuous because the sample mean can take on sort of any of these values, right? Because the sample mean is the, the average of a bunch of values. But um, that's why when we look at 1, we get this squiggly stuff. But uh, the point of this is since the binomial is symmetric, it very quickly approaches uh, the normal distribution, whereas something like the gamma, which is right skewed, kind of takes a little bit longer to... to be symmetric. Um, so continue to check this out for yourself. Uh, the, the key point is that as you increase n, uh, the things become normal uh, regardless of what the underlying distribution is. Uh, part of the amazing result of the central limit theorem.